if you are getting into pigeons to keep them healthy, a crash course or a basic list of things that you're gonna want to have. Some of these things are a little more beneficial than others, but I am I'm taking into effect all of the things to give the pigeons the best. All right, folks, so we've got an interesting little chit chat today. First of all, I want to show you a couple of these young birds. We're banding them. I'm going to kind of talk through the process of that. But then also we've been getting a ton of questions. Yeah, you see that bad boy? We're doing a little construction project and it's nice to have a big pin to throw everything in. So we're going to be kind of talking about the good to have things if you're getting into pigeons. Again, I throw this caveat out every time because the pigeon folks that are gonna jump on here, they're gonna be like, bro, you don't know anything about pigeons. And um, the non-pigeon people are gonna be like, whoa, you know so much about pigeons. I fall right above the, I know more than some of you, but not as much as most of you, okay? But there are a few people that are gonna get some interest out of this, okay? So I've got some really interesting information that I want to share and it's going to involve a handful of things that the average person might want to have in their I'm getting into pigeons maybe I should keep a few of these things around first though let's take a look at these young birds that just hatched out over here some of you may remember this loft that we set up a while ago guys I haven't made uh, very many changes off of this you can see these uh, nesting boxes are working fairly well, and uh, we need to rake yet this week, but these nesting boxes are working fairly well. Some of them have bowls, some of them have kicked the bowls out repeatedly enough that I've just pulled them, and then they've made their nests like these folks down here. They were just like, yeah, we know there's nest bowls available, but we choose there. These are actually 12 by 12 by 12, which is ultimately a little bit small, but it does get the job done. We have some young birds here yeah oh, pop at me there you guys are a little friendlier a little color in you look at that that is unique these guys are just about coming up on 30 days old not quite there oh little babies just about coming up on 30 days old and when they hit that, that's when we'll do our vaccinating. Now, this is one of the more common things that people have been asking about. You guys aren't very old. These guys are still a bit young to be banded, but we may try and throw bands on them anyway. Sometimes I do them just a day or two early and then I check them. Sometimes they stay on, sometimes they don't. The magic number is like six to eight, seven being the average for banding your baby pigeons. I've got some down here. These are just the, the little custom bands that I had made for my birds. So I won't be racing any of these guys. These guys are gonna be white. Look how white and pink they are right now. Now this bird, I put his band on. This one's a little bit bigger. This band is staying. This little baby's kicked the band one time. So now we're gonna go back on. I've seen a lot of different preferences on this. Wind banding, um, the guy that I followed, talked to, said to go ahead and put the bands on with the numbers up, right side up. Others to explain that when you hold the pigeon with its feet out back behind them, you wanna be able to read, so you'd essentially put the band on upside down. But his recommendation to me was put the bands on uh, right side up, so you can see the numbers while the bird is standing up. And then you're gonna go ahead and run the three center toes in through the band. And then when you pull up here, you pop that um, little toe out. And sometimes it takes just a little, like the tip of a, a ballpoint pen, or here I've got a little piece of grass. And once you pop that through, you check, will the band come off the foot? And in this case, these bands that I ordered are just a little bit big and this, or this bird's just a little bit small. But we'll have to check that again yet and see if it does pop off. It's pretty dang close to the right size there. 
There you go. Stay, stay there with your buddy. And then again, like this, we've got nest bulls all over the place. They said, hmm, this looks like a great spot to, to lay the babies. Now, these guys down here, they fall again on our ground nesters, which I don't overly encourage, but look at them. They're all in about that same window and will be headed into the vaccination zone uh, within the next few days. Now, vaccinations, I mentioned this a couple times, and just today alone, several people have reached out and asked, I think I've got that thing with the, the heads getting twisted and blah. What do I do? Do I kill those birds? What am I gonna do? And they said, well, a lot of that's preventable by just vaccinating or PMV. The other thing you can vaccinate for is salmonella, which there are still other strains, but for the most part, it's gonna help. So these birds will all get inoculated for both PMV and salmonella. And that happens here soon. And then in a couple more weeks, they do ship out to a gentleman in, I believe, Maine. Let's go ahead and take a look here. We're gonna move over and I'm gonna show you some of the racing bird stuff that I've got going on. Even though it's evening, I know these guys would enjoy getting out, flying around a bit. There they go. Out for an evening spin. I'm gonna make a, a loop around. There they go. Get a little group together and back by. All right, I'm gonna apologize to you for this being just a wee bit of a mess. Birds inside make a mess, folks. This gets swept up and the tray's cleaned off every week, but I've made a few changes and this is all, you know, a learning process for me and I just like to share as we go. Before, these all had the individual bowls divided in the center. And what we ended up doing is providing additional space. So this is like the penthouse suite, if you will. There's plenty of room here. These folks, look at that, still no eggs. Come on, guys. They have raised a few, a couple of them have been infertile. So we've been waiting on that to happen the right way so we can send off the last of their birds to races these guys are here for fun they're they're breeding birds we're going to be flying around here i will be opening this up here shortly for them by the time their babies come that's red if you remember from original and then this is the very nice looking cockbird that i bought that was supposed to be a granddaughter to kid cannonball i believe and Sure enough, it's uh, not a uh, hen. We still having fun there. And they have their eggs. Their eggs should hatch here in the next uh, day or two. And then we're working on you two. So far, uh, no luck, but we've got about seven, eight days left before they should, if they are in fact made it in rocking and rolling. We do have eggs and babies down here. A little blackbird, little blue check, and mama black saying, hello, look at me. <laughs> These guys have all been vaccinated. This young bird right here is ready to be shipped off Monday this next week. You, you are a little turd. You're always pecking and feisty. If this is, you've been feisty since day one. You're gonna stay here and you're gonna fly around. We're gonna see, I have to come up with a name for you because you're gonna stick around until you don't make it home, but we're gonna see how far you can fly. You're actually out of uh, that red bird right there. This little baby in the back, these are the, the pair that I got from Protege. This little bird back here will be ready to ship out here. Same time as this bird. So they'll go together. That'll be the last two birds that I ship over to the Southern Bell one loft race. Now, I've got a couple things that I was going to show you. First of all, my feeding calendar schedule. I'll show you that. Four birds shipped off here. These birds that are going to the Peach Classic, they're all uh, actually in the making. We've got four of the babies laid. We're waiting on two more. These two will be numbered out here as soon as I get ready to ship them. I'm just waiting until all falls into the clear. What we meant to start this video off as, the main event, if you will. I uh, mentioned a couple things. If you are getting into pigeons to keep them healthy, a crash course or a basic list of things that you're gonna want to have. Um, some of these things are a little more beneficial than others, but I am I'm taking into effect all of the things to give the pigeons the best. First of all and foremost, I would recommend that you vaccinate them. Now, your initial investment in that is going to be fairly expensive because the bottles only come in one size. Most of you are gonna have only a few pigeons and the bottles I think vaccinate maybe 50 birds, so you have to take that into effect. I mean, you're paying for way more than what you actually need. The next is going to be this guy right here, right? 
probably all seen this in grocery store, may even have some in your house. Raw, unfiltered apple cider vinegar to help acidify the water. There's several different companies out there that make different products. All of them think that theirs are the best. People that I've talked to feel like they really aren't doing anything more than what the cider vinegar is and that's readily available. So the next is going to be a couple different types of antibiotics. If yours have a respiratory issue, now I in fact haven't had to use any of this. We haven't had any respiratory issues, but I've got it on hand just in case. The next is going to be probiotics. Well, we'll go through antibiotics first. There's a couple, there's not a lot. There's just a couple things. Um, canker is one that's gonna affect your young birds. This was the one that was recommended. Um, it's the liquid canker. You put that in their water. It's uh, in the same family as metronidazole, which is something you probably heard of if you have anything to do with dogs. Some of the guys coming over, bird dog guys. Metronidazole, you've probably heard of. This is a similar family. In fact, metronidazole is actually a, metronidazole is actually a canker treatment if you could formulate it properly. But Ava's, A-V-A, apostrophe S, Ava's liquid canker cure was the one that was recommended as the best. Amoxicillin. Amoxicillin is going to be for if you have, if your pigeons do get salmonella or a handful of other things, sometimes respiratory stuff as well. So you've got some antibiotics on hand if your birds do get sick. You got canker medicine on hand. And then that uh, Tylon is the good for respiratory issues. So those would be the three things that you're going to see out of your young birds. And it's better to have them and not need them than need them because your birds get sick and then you're trying to get stuff to you and it's taking a while to get there and your birds are getting sicker and you can see where this is going now as far as the daily type stuff goes i'm rotating throughout the week from plain water to apple cider water is going to be a good deal you can utilize plain feed folks pick up pigeon feed chewy.com sells different pigeon feeds They've got some browns, they got Versalaga, Versalilaga, however you say that exactly. Several different options. It's not that expensive. Your birds are not gonna eat very much. You're talking about one to one and a half tablespoons a bird per day. So a 50 pound or a 40 pound bag lasts a long while. These are gonna be things that are beneficial to have, but not 100% necessary. You've got uh, probiotics. This is uh, Primalac and it sell, they sell it in a smaller container too, but the big container works. And that Primalac is good. Probiotics in general, we utilize that for dogs all the time. It's going to be a good thing for the birds, okay? Bath salts aren't necessary, but they do help. And then aside from that, everything else is kind of, you know, helpful, but not 100% needed. Oh, 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 grit. So this is the, um, it's a mineral grit. And I wanna show you this because it's really, it's really pretty cool looking. You can see the little pumice stone looking pieces and little shell pieces, red rock grit in there. There's all kinds of stuff. And originally I utilized Des Moines pigeon feed to feed the birds. Um, right now they're all on a breeder mix that are breeding. The others are on the, I think it's like a 22 is the number that they put on it. But I used their red rock pigeon grit and the birds pretty much didn't touch it. Now this stuff, you put the same amount in every day that I was giving them of the Red Rock, and they kill this. Instantly hit it. So definitely having the extra minerals and having the extra stuff in there is beneficial to the birds. But you've got grit, cider, oregano oil, or garlic oil. Both of those are tit for tat, uh, said to be the most beneficial. Castle Pigeon is where I actually got this. They have like a cold press that's supposed to be the most beneficial version of it because some of it it can lose some of its benefits if it's not taken care of properly or if it's old or if it's whatever those are things that you can add to the feed some of the other things that i had mentioned before would be brewer's yeast or just yeast it ends up having a lot of vitamin b in it by and has the niacin you can combine that with the peanut butter or just the standard oil all of those things we talked about in a previous video but the must-haves I would recommend, pigeon feed. Specific pigeon feed is gonna be better. It's whole grain, it's gonna be clean, it's gonna be a lot easier to work with, and they're gonna utilize more of it, waste less. The apple cider vinegar, utilizing probiotics, and then um, having antibiotics on hand just in case you need them is not a bad idea. The rest are all gonna be bonus things if they, in fact, are um, something you decide to use with your birds. So all in all, folks, I've got kind of a uh, fun race season planned. I will have, if all goes well as they finish up here, we'll have 12 birds entered 
but I should have 12 birds all in all and I'm gonna help you follow. I'm gonna keep you posted as I follow along with that. As soon as my birds start flying at the individual races, every single time that they're even training, the birds get clocked and those statistics are put online. So we'll be able to track, are they doing well? Did they get lost? Are they competing or are they kind of being the losers in the bunch the whole way along? Um, but, I'll be able to keep you posted on that. And then very soon here, I will be showing you because I'm gonna keep a handful of these young birds around. They're gonna need their own loft and they're gonna need to start flying. I'm gonna show you what that looks like because we've gotta get building on that bad boy. Thanks guys for watching. I'm the guy with the pink gun. I will see you in the next video.